Oh, we get so bogged okay. down in all the little details and the dabbing and all that. We really can throw a lot of that away, not even worry about it. It took me a long time to be able to do that and not just nitpick on everything, which is hard not to do. Um, let's see. With oil paint, you go thin to thick. So usually when I lay it out, it's, it starts out very thin. Um, let's see. Your eye will fill in the lines. I don't use any black. I make my darkest dark, like on these, with a mixture of green and purple. And just keep it real dark, and that's usually what I start out. But so I'll sort of show you how, how I do this. And I brought in, you know, this is a panel carrier for wet panels to travel with. And it, it weighs nothing, and you just slip them in. They come in all different sizes. Because I used to have a wooden one that just weighed a ton. It took up the whole suitcase. Um, and I have, I've printed out stuff that I put in luggage if I'm traveling with paints. And you never want to tell an airline person that you're carrying paint. <laughs> you want to call it colors. And you kind of act dumb. These are my artist colors. These are my <laughs> colors, you know? And you don't ever say paint or they'll freak out. <laughs> and this has, this has all of the, um, the flash points of what temperature it needs to be heated to. And hairspray is so much more dangerous than any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But they want to see this. So I put this on my hands because I, I don't like to paint with gloves. A lot of people say paint with gloves, but I put this stuff on. And suppose, What's that called? Um, gloves in a bottle. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> invisible glove or invisible gloves in a yeah. bottle. Yeah, yeah, there's a bunch of different products. Yeah. Is that so your hands can wash off easier it's, when you're done? It's so I don't absorb the paint. Oh, because, because the some, oil? Of the, some of the cadmiums are dangerous. What about in acrylic? Is that true in acrylic? Um, It'd be easier to get it off. Yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, I've never heard of that stuff. It's, I know, but can you And I'm not sure how effective it is, but it does help. Like, I just got a bunch of paint on me when I was setting this out, and I just put some on and kind of use it like soap. I have a question about, uh, I bought, from Michael's, I bought a clear, it's like a clear gloss, and it's supposed to help me. Transparency, you mix it with your colors. With acrylic or with oil? acrylic? See, I don't know anything about acrylic. Oh, okay. So, sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I'll look it up on the internet. Because I was thinking about, like, with the rainbow, you know, how you can gloss it down and so it's more see through. Right, right. And acrylic, you can mix with water. I'm sure you've got lots of people here who yeah. know how water to water and use yeah. acrylics more than I. I just like. I like that oil is slow. I like the time honored uh, tradition of that. Yeah, and I can come yeah. back in and mm -hmm. mess with it the next day. And I keep my paints in the freezer at night. <laughs> and then I pull it out in the morning, it's all ready. Um, I have a great studio. I'm so lucky at my house. It's above a boathouse, so I get to look out at the water. Oh, wow. It's really it's a beautiful spot. So anyway, let's see. Um, okay, so what I've done, I've just laid everything out on my palette here. And this, with the Soltec, the things fit inside. And just lay this on top. And then I always have a, a jar lid that I fill with the Gamsol to mix it with for my for the initial laying. Mm -hmm. It's not quite laying flat, so I have to see what I've got here. And I always have um, pliers with me because I can never get the tubes open when I want them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I try not to work from photographs very much unless if I took them. I don't. I don't work from other people's photos because you can't see what was there really. And a photo tends to put everything in focus. And like I said, we really don't need everything in focus. So sometimes it can distract you with all of this stuff. But I brought in, I like to do poppies. There's a, there's a garden near me that's got poppies and roses and whatever that blue stuff is. And when the light is hitting it, it's just magnificent. So this is one I've done from these photos. So I'm gonna sort of lay this out. Normally I let stuff in my studio, I let things dry in between. Um, and then I can come in with the color so it doesn't get muddy. And I tend to paint, I'm a kind of a cool painter, I love blues and greens. So I start out my paintings in cad red light, an orange color, so this one's dry. And this is a cool product. This like is a foam core panel, 
which if you travel, this weighs nothing. <coughs> so I can leave that out and show you too if you want to kind of play around with this stuff. But um, what I, I, so since I like cool colors and I tend to pick cool colors, I lay out my, my layout in the orange red because you know, opposite colors, that kind of zings, whereas you've got analogous colors that are more calming and soothing. So basically I'm going from across the color wheel. And the color wheel, just for interesting news, was developed by Sir Isaac Newton in 1666. <laughs> I had no idea I thought that was a very cool thing. So anyway, for my layout, sometimes I will wear a glove just because I get really messy with it. And have you ever done white on white with the oil? Oh yeah. But if I get messed up, then sometimes I let them dry and turn to the wall for a while and let them yeah. just, you know. So what I do is I just dip it, dip a paper towel in some of that damsel and then I just get a little bit of the head of white and just, because I want to do it fast, especially if I'm plein air painting. In my studio, I've probably got Four, three or four paintings going at the same time. So if one is too wet, I just, you know, ignore it. But the problem with <coughs> wet on wet on this is if I want to get a really beautiful blue, like in these backgrounds, it's going to turn muddy because it's on the wet paint. Uh, but I thought, you know, I'll just sort of show you. And I always, put a dot in the middle of my canvas. For some reason, I cannot always remember where the middle is. And so I just, you know, I kind of eyeball it first. And then I'll measure. Maybe I'm getting better at that. That's a lot of practice. Well, <laughs> good eye. Yeah. So that's basically the middle, because I want to know where the middle is. Yeah. Not that. And I've got a clip on the side with the garbage bag, and I use a bungee cord to put paper towels on the side. So now I'm, I'm going to my pictures, and I really like these poppies right here. I'm not so happy with this, but I kind of like those guys. So I might put those down in there. And I don't sketch stuff out ahead of time. I get too bogged. I do it all on the canvas. Everybody does their own. Uh -huh. Your canvas there on your paper, is that just for oil or is that just regular art paper that you're painting on? This is oh. one of these. Oh, that's oh, okay. it's canvas. It's like a foam oh, core. I see. Yeah. Okay. It's canvas on a oh. foam core. I I've got a crazy question. They just now, I think, recently banned the production or use of something of styrofoam. I wonder how that's going to affect Oh, you know, I don't know. I wonder if that's going to affect that. It might. And I'm glad they're banning styrofoam, actually, but I guess that is foam cord. Can you pop it around? Yeah, sure. But this source tech, there's a lot of places that make really nice panels. Some of them are very thin wood, which is great. But for travel, it's, mm -hmm. it's nice not to have to carry 10 pounds of wood. <laughs> so, okay, so anyway, so I've got my sort of my middle going here. And then, I, again, I use the cad red light to lay everything in. And you can see on some of my finished ones, you can see the original drawing <coughs> is all that orange back in there. See that? And that lets it glow through. It gives it kind of a look of light, like especially on this one. You can see, I mean, there's canvas in there. Oh, I love that. But then I can put all that blue on top of it, but it still makes it glow like there's light there. And these are just little prints that I do because I like it when like little kids will come to my studio and they you know they want to buy some art or something so I have something that they can have or buy or whatever. And then I do greeting cards and a panel. And so yeah, there's a lot of them. It's just on paper. I like those galoshes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so I've got, I've I've got my dot in the middle. How fast does that cat red um, mm -hmm. gamson mm -hmm. set up if you do leave it? To, you don't know because you sleep a long time? It's, see, <laughs> it's a long time. Okay. I usually, like if I'm working in my studio, I'll come out, I'll do the whole lay-in, and then I'll let it dry. Yeah. And I won't paint on yeah. it. But if you're plein air painting, you don't have that no. option. No. 
and sometimes I'll do just a, a lighter coat of it. Like you did here. Yeah, but usually, probably 75% of the stuff I paint outside, I'll come back in the studio later after it's dried and mm -hmm. mess around with it a little more. But so, okay, so I'm, so I'm looking at this, and I'm going to, okay, I want something, you, I don't want anything right in the middle. take workshops from artists that I love, and you always get a jewel from them. And um, Eric Jacobson used to live here, and now he's on the East Coast. But he said, always try to have your lines, think in angles, try to keep them diagonal because then you get more movement. He said the only thing that should be parallel to the edge is a horizon line. Everything else should be crooked, is his, you know, <laughs> his <laughs> point of view, which is, Hard to do because we tend to do lines. He probably is an architect, though. And he, <laughs> he's great. Stick to him. Yeah. Put Eric down on the Willamette, and this is one he did there. Uh -huh. And he has this what he says make it, break it, and then make it again. So, like, when, if he's doing a tree trunk, he'll put it up. Like, you know, he'll, he'll go like this, up against the sky. And then he'll paint the sky kind of over it. So he's made it and he breaks it. And then he comes through and makes it again. And somehow it, I don't know, it, 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 looks, it just fits better into the scene. It doesn't look so blunt, drawn on and so <laughs> contrived or contrived, I guess is the right word. But I was, I was at a workshop with him and I got so mad. I was just having a terrible day. I could not, nothing was working. So I had this little board, and I did this painting in 20 minutes. I just was so angry, and I just wailed. There was no mountain there. And i like, oh my gosh, I like it. So forgive yourselves, be kind to yourselves. Just, just play with it, because you never know what's gonna happen. And if you look back at like the old masters and stuff, they messed up their paintings. They cut them in half. The people criticized them. So, I mean, we're always our worst critics. It took me years before I could even tell anyone to call myself an artist. And I, I love really bright colors and flowers. And stuff. So I see this other poppy over here. I'm kind of like putting that in. And then these guys are probably here. Start with tan colors if they're more tonalists. And I also like to push off the edges, which some people don't like to do. So this is just my road map. I'm just, you know, trying to figure out where in the world this is going to go. So then I start with the darkest dark. And again, you want to keep that dark kind of thin. But I, I don't know if I want to do a real dark background here. I think I want to keep the darks sort of like, like that one, have the darks be more of the blues. But um, so again, I, 
if I want any liquidy sucker, then I mix it in that mm -hmm. candle. So then I'm just taking the purple. And you can walk around. Can you come and look at this if you want? But the purple and the green make a really nice dark. Mm -hmm. You gotta use the biggest brush you can use, right? For the, without messing it up. Yes, and this is actually smaller, but I'm a little nervous. So. <laughs> tips. Um, I had a teacher long ago that said you can basically, you really want to push the colors. You can put any color like in this place here as long as it's about the same value. Mm -hmm. So you can put blue or red or you know anything like that. So and I, like I said, I love blue. So I'm going back to blue. And you, you made that black with green and red. This green and purple. purple. Green and purple. Diazin yeah, on purple very and, chromatic. and sap green. Just yeah, it comes across really nice from back here. So. Just, I guess, because I like, again, it's a colder green. <clears throat> Sometimes I'll add a little red to it to warm it up, but. Well, and you've already got the red behind it, and it's going to pick up a little. Right, red. it will pick up some of that. Yeah. Okay, so. I have to figure out where I've got my light coming from. I guess it's coming this way, so. I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, as soon as someone, oh, let's see. I usually have a little bit more trouble when people are watching me too, but you're doing wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yes, you did. And I put out, I, since, like I was saying, I love blue. And I put out, there's a couple of blues. This is one um, King's Blue Deep, made by Royal Holland. That I have not figured out how to make this color. So I use it straight out of the tube. And I know you're not supposed to use color straight out of the tube, but I use color straight out of the tube just because it's faster, it's easier, and it'll it'll blend on the canvas a little bit too. Mm -hmm. Something a little bit different. But like look at this color. Well and some of those colors are pre-mixed when you buy them. Right. So that's the one you need. So is that the blue that we were just talking about, the Holland blue? This one right there. Yeah, the one yes. that you're using. Yeah, yeah. I was using ultramarine to kind of start with. Yeah. Have you seen that new blue that Oregon State came out of a few years ago? It's a brand new blue. Who makes it? Is it gambling or? I don't know who makes it now. Didn't they put the little marker on it and made it so it's so difficult to find and buy? Oh, well, that's, I don't know. All I know is it was a beautiful blue. And they're I thought, bankrupt now. But, but. They, started, they said this is a brand new blue. And I thought, yeah, they're, the, the older paints have um, like ultramarine blue and they have more traditional names, but the new stuff that's got more, I don't know, chemical pigment in it no. will have like some long, crazy name. Yeah. So then you know that it's more of a modern color. And some of the old colors were um, phantom colors, like alizarin and crimson. A lot of um, Van Gogh's paintings of the, the white irises were actually pink, mm. but the pink mm. disappeared. I took some, I took a piece of canvas and I put all my favorite paints on it and I laid it in the sun for like a couple years just to see mm. what stuff, and on the tube it'll tell you, you know, what the light fastness is. But there's still some, if it's, if it's got a low light fastness, you don't want to use it because if it's getting light, it's going to disappear over time. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's all these chemical reactions, too, that you just have to know. And you want to vary your brush strokes, have them go in every direction and every size. And um, oh, dots are great. And I usually do that at the end. Okay, so I should be looking over here. So let's see, I've got some purpley flowers up there. And 
and people are very intimidated to, to try this, which is, I, I, when I did Portland Open Studios, so many people would come, oh, I'm not an artist, I can't do this. And I made every one of them paint, and then I couldn't get them to stop. They <laughs> loved it. So if you just can convince people that it's just kind of playing with color, they don't have to be so serious about it. This is another favorite color. Oh, yeah. That's radiant turquoise. That's, that's a gambling color, too. And I love that one. Turquoise, cobalt turquoise. And probably my favorite thing I like to think about is to try and make the fun show. You want people to look at your painting and see that it was fun. And find that fun in it. And it might be the mistake. It might be like the big, you know, big blob like that. You just leave it. But it, it gives a feeling of joy that if you render it so much, you render that out of it. So I always am thinking, is the fun showing? Is it just, can somebody see how much fun this was to do? Or can they see how painful it was? <laughs> see, you guys are artists. You can see the, you can yeah. read the painful yeah. ones. And even when, you know, in a museum, you see some of the old masters where they struggled. Oh, oh that's where they were having problems. And it's just like, they had problems too, you know? Yeah. Which is, is a good reminder that everybody does. It's just part of the deal. So this blue, these blues are getting a little muddy because I'm right on that um, turf, or on the, the, yeah, the lane. And so I always have, a, I'm not very patient with changing or with cleaning my brushes, so I get a bunch of brushes going. Well, this one's really a little bit too small. I'm going to work with the purple. You kind of want to work all over the canvas at the same time, so it's kind of coming up from the, Mixing too much with that red. Um, do you teach? No, not really. Once in a while, um, I have a special student that That's come in. People charm themselves into your yeah, studio. Yeah. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I've done it for auctions. I'll donate like um, a class or a couple hours or something. And if you add white to a color, it cools it down. Instantly cools it down. So if you're trying to do, well, like on this color, the purple, I, I like the cool light on it. But trying to make a light red is almost impossible with adding. Yeah, it becomes pink. Right, it, it washes it out immediately. So then you just always add yellow to get to that. So like, I'm working on these two oranges. Let's see, go back to this poppy. Um, the middle of my poppy is like here's the kind of dark in here. So then the reds I take. See here, you gotta be careful. I just picked up some of that purple, which added some dark in there. But there is some dark in there, so I guess that's okay. So how do you bring the red out? Okay, with like an orange? Or mix it with something like that. It's um, kind of yellow orange. Mm -hmm. And then it just takes just a light touch. And then you can even go to a brighter yellow. <coughs> And 
And so where it's mixing with the green, I might wait until that's dry, come back later, and just hit it with a, a real bright yellow at the edge. And plein air painting is very difficult. How many of you paint outside? You know, there's like three or four of us, yeah. It's good to do that every once in a while because then you, you really see the light and the color, but it's difficult. I've had bees, I've had sprinklers come on, I've had my <laughs> blow off the cliff. This, this painting over here, a sheep came and got, started eating my palette and it yeah. got yellow all over its cheek and <laughs> I had to start over in certain parts. But yeah, it's, it's, it makes it more, definitely it grounds you. Yeah, and it's, it's much more of a challenge. And I have a problem with, I, I'm outside or something, and I see all this beautiful stuff, and I'm like, oh, I want that, and then I want that, and then, I, and then you get totally lost. So yeah. I have to physically make, I pick a tree or something, and I can't yeah. get past that tree. <laughs> you just take a, a camera picture of it right there and there. Yes, and then look at that, and then I do that it. too. I do that too. I'll have my phone. I'll take a picture of what I'm trying right. to do. Rather than and then every once in a while I'll pull it up and go, oh now you grab that other tree that was going to go and take that out. And the other thing is the light changes. Oh, it changes constantly. Oh, constantly. So yeah, if you've got the photo as a reference, I mean, yeah. this was the light I'm trying to go for. Uh -huh. And that and that's why you have to paint fast and right. just be very forgiving of yourself because some of it just is just crazy what happens. But um, yeah, so if I have a tree that I can't look past, or then I'm like trying to figure out what else not to look at over there. <laughs> but it's, it's it's all very challenging and you know it's just a lot of fun. And then you're really seeing the colors. Okay, so starting to work. So now I switched this yellow on my brush, so I'm going to have to go back to the red. This guy is really good. So sometimes I just rub it on and keep looking at the same brush. Oh, and there's a really great orange that I just thought I really like. This one is great. Coral orange. So it's just, it's been able to get a brightness that was taking me too long to make. You see how that just blurred in that blue with it? I'm like, oh, but I kind of like that, so it doesn't bother me too much. Well, like you said, it makes it sit in the... Right. Yeah. And for my young darks in here, again, I kind of go to a purple red. What is that you're adding to it? Um, it's just a... To make it darker? Magenta <laughs> kind of color. So. And like sometimes I go back to that as an on purple, which is really dark and really strong. Mm -hmm. But it, you know, it did pretty well. Okay. And if these come to your yeah, painting, that means you've done a really good. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, there's a little bit of Try to colonize it. Yeah. <laughs> All these are just, I don't know, I just think they're so much fun. I'm really not supposed to be putting in these yellows until Nancy, can you step away for a second so we can see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. yeah. And you can walk up here and look around at it. <laughs> Perfect. Just get out of the way so you see. Colors. Okay. 
this demo will be on a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the plan. Good. But do you have a preference in brush sizes? I tend, I like eights, I like sixes. Yeah. Yeah. Fourteen. Um, and I used to only like filberts, now I only like flats, so it just changes from time to time. Ten is about right. Ten is a nice medium size for this kind of canvas. And sometimes I'll, you know, I'll grab a really fat one and just go super fast and just see what happens. And sometimes I can't control it. But it's better to push yourself that direction because, you know, the minute you get a little brush, you start doing this. picture do you find that you um, knock some of the colors back later after you put them on really dark sometimes yeah. yeah sometimes I'm, yeah because I've got this pretty dark over here but it's beautiful color but I also mm -hmm. liked in my picture how it the dark against that poppy mm -hmm. so that's you know it's constantly like what do I want the dark where do I want the light okay so See where I kind of messed this one too much? It's a little bit too. Maybe go back. Yeah, it looks nice. I do. I think I like, you like it. You like that? Yeah. Oh, you do too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's the other question that all artists make is that we get to a point and it's like, gee, do I keep continuing or do I stop now? I know. <laughs> stop earlier. And whenever I get stuck, I end up, if I take stuff out, that helps me a lot more than putting more in. Mm -hmm. And I've tried um, using the mirror, and I tried painting with my canvas upside down, and then I would find myself, I was painting like this. <laughs> <laughs> so that didn't work for me. But some people, that works great, because it takes your mind away from what you're looking at. Yeah. But I couldn't do it. <laughs> I was like, this is really dumb, upside down now. Mm -hmm. Or a lot of times if I get really mad at something, I'll just turn it to the wall for a few weeks and then look at it again. And I have a friend, a really good friend I paint with all the time, and it's so great to paint with somebody else. Just to go, what's happening here? Is your, I'm just curious, is your studio in your house or do you have a building outside? Or? It's a, it's a boathouse, so it's a separate building, but it's on my yard. So I, I walk out there and it doesn't- You live in a boathouse and then you go- no, well, so, I live in a regular house, but I've oh. got a boat. I live on Lake Oswego. Uh -huh. And so we have a boat, and it's in this oh. cool building. And I was able to put a little peak on space on top of it about you know, 25 years ago and get my studio hmm. that I just love. 
It's so, but it doesn't have a bathroom, doesn't have running water. Ooh. So I'm running back and forth all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but and in the summer when it's really hot, I paint my swimsuit and I jump in the lake. <laughs> and then I paint till I'm dry and then I jump in the lake. Yeah. Paint till I'm dry. <laughs> which is a great way to paint actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. So you do live in the park where it's private? The lake of Swigo is private? The whole lake is private? No, I said do you live in that part or do you live down on the um, on Main Street where the ship <laughs> She lives on the lake. I live right next to the lake, so. There's but the lake lakes. is down, and then it goes up the hill a little bit. <coughs> so. Lakes can't go uphill. <laughs> no, I mean, okay, okay. I mean, it's up the street. Um, there's a private part to it where there's houses, and it's not open to the public. The whole lake is. The whole lake is. You probably are talking about the downtown area. That you yes. Can see. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's just a little tiny part of the lake. Yeah. It goes out three miles. It's three miles long. Yeah. But that part's the part you can see from, from downtown Oswego. And it's, but you can walk all around, and there's bridges and stuff all over the place. And, and there are lots of easements that people can use that don't live right next to it, and they oh. have an easement, so they can't yeah. go there. And we can't oh. put her address on this because we're filming it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go visit her. <laughs> you guys can come visit me. Okay, so where am I? So, I guess I need to figure out here. Let's see, it's going to bleed into that purple. It's going to be a mess. Love poppies, we're so happy. Oh my gosh, it's beautiful. You can take me on form. So do you paint the do you have an order where you paint the paddles that are further away and then paint the ones that are in the front, or is it just whatever? It's pretty random. Okay. <laughs> is it <laughs> this is depending on what's sort of exciting me at the moment. Okay. And then I switch back and forth. You know, and you really should judge it from way back there, not from up here. So oh, yeah, I am way back. Sorry. <laughs> so just keep walking back. My studio, I'm constantly just pacing back and forth. But I'm just sort of trying to give you an idea of how I paint. I mean, this is a pretty rushed kind of deal, but that's good for me. You can sort of see. Yeah. And I like. Um, I was painting with kids. I love children's art. I think children should be given not oil, but acrylic and really good equipment and supplies. And people should train kids' art. And the talk that I give to non artists, I'm always telling them you know, don't buy something to match your couch. Yeah. Buy right. something you love. If you see a work of art and you love it, buy it. Doesn't matter if it was done by a street artist or a child or some fancy schmancy gallery animal because so many people are influenced by what other people tell them oh this is going to be really valuable or this is you know which just makes me crazy i'm sure it makes all of you guys crazy too because that's you should be buying it from your heart not from mm -hmm. from that do you have all seven of your grandchildren painted um they've all well some of them are too little still too little. they eat the paint <laughs> but, but I try and get all of them out there. Yeah, great. And you know, and they're great because they're they're totally uninhibited. Yeah, they're right? totally uninhibited. Right. I was doing one, and they've done this just really cool landscape, with like a little person in some trees, and and there was no sky. And he goes, now I want to put the sky in. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's just gonna mess up this whole thing. But all he did, he took blue, and he just went, whoosh, made one line. Right. I'm like, fantastic. I mean, it was just, it was great. So I've worked with, that's how I, since I was trained as a nurse, I really didn't know art history very well. But I volunteered in the, the Lake Oswego schools in their art literacy program, which is a fabulous program. And, you know, we'd have to present a different artist every month. So I learned, you know, when you're presenting it to somebody, you learn it. And giving those kids the chance to, to try stuff, and it's very open-ended. Are many of you familiar with that program? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Isn't it just great? That's fun. Yeah. I got in a lot of trouble one time. Um, 
there's still paint on the school at Forest Hills. <laughs> uh, we were doing Jackson Pollock. <laughs> and I, was doing, first time I had to do two levels, and I was doing the kindergartners for the first graders, I guess. And so we showed them the slides, and I gave them little containers of all different colored paint. Took them outside and taped a huge piece of paper on the school and let them just go to town. And I just let them dig themselves into a hole. The whole thing turned brown and ripped apart, and they were just like. <laughs> and we came back in the room, and the teacher's looking at me like, Nancy, you are crazy. And so, but I asked them, I said, so what happened? They're like, well, I, we mixed too many colors. I said, well, I have to teach the third graders. What should I tell them? And they came up with this perfect lesson plan that they had figured out. And they, I just thought it was so great. They learned so much from that huge mess mm -hmm. that they wouldn't have learned if, if you know, you tell them to do it this way. Yeah. It, was, it was great. So anytime you can volunteer with something like that, it's, it's just, I don't know, it just gets you encouraged again. So I'm just trying to get some of that sunlight on the edge of these. Talk. It's just yeah, no, <laughs> yeah, we're all watching. It's that we're watching, but yeah, uh, you know, if people have questions. In there on their in the palette. Yeah, I put tons of white on just for at the end. And stuff. Okay, because I end up using most of that. I was like, wow. And that's a couple other things that I've learned from artists that I really admire was paint like a rich man. Paint like you can put all this paint, even though it's so expensive. And, or paint like a lion, that was another good one. So I try and visualize some of that stuff. Paint like a lion? But I really like the thing, paint to look a fun show, so people can see where you really have fun with it. You have a question? Uh huh. I've accidentally leaned on my tube of paint. Yeah, yeah you have a lot. Yeah. I really have a lot. What does paint like a lion mean? Just like, <laughs> oh, okay. you're like fierce and you're just like, Brave. Yeah, really brave. Just okay. very courageous. I had this picture of paws going across yeah. the <laughs> <laughs> I, <was thinking. laughs> I took, I don't know if you know who Ken Oster is. He passed away a few years ago. He was an artist in Laguna. And I just love his work. And I took a workshop from him. He never cleaned his brushes. Never. He would just like leave them stuck. And there was paint everywhere. And he'd come out the next day and he'd take this brush that was all hard and just start painting with it. Oh, ah. And he, that man could paint with sticks. I mean, it was it was amazing to see what he could do with so you know such a bad tool. But, you know, I'm taking such good care of my but it wouldn't be the right color, would it? He didn't care. He just until he got more on there, and then it would like fly on the floor. And he, he was so funny. He had, he'd taken slides of everywhere, all the things he wanted to paint. He had this big like garbage can full of slides, and he would like go like this. And reach in and pull out a slide. He goes, "Okay, this is what I'm going to show you today." And he would work from that. Wow. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just—he was so fun. Mm -hmm. But it, and then another time that sort of relates to what I did. I was in New Zealand and I hadn't taken any of my paint stuff. And my husband was off fishing. And I'm like, I really want to paint. I have nothing. And I found a little store and I bought a tiny little set of oil paints and three brushes and some canvases. And I went out in the woods. And I bungee corded a canvas to a tree <laughs> for my easel. And I had toilet paper to use, like for this. Mm -hmm. And I had, what else? I, I did get some turp, some kind of turpentine stuff. So I had that in a little jar. And I did like six paintings. And it was so much fun. And I'm like, why am I buying all this expensive stuff? I mean, you really could just go out and use that. So it was, it was a very encouraging moment. 
because we tend to think we need all this new stuff all the time. Which is like me. So where should I go with this? Nancy, could you talk a little bit about your Portland art museum? Um, oh, the Reynolds Sales yeah. Gallery? Would you mind sharing a little bit? No, the Reynolds Sales Gallery, I think, is the the best gallery in Oregon because they really value the artists mm -hmm. and a portion it's it's hard to get into it's it's really hard to get into and you get juried in and then you can put in one piece in the spring well one or two pieces in the spring show and one or two pieces in the fall show and if your piece doesn't rent for six months you have to take it out and you can't replace it so it's really hard to keep work in there but it, it that because of that it's always really fresh and rotating and if someone buys a piece, you know, a certain percentage goes to the art museum. They give the artists, most galleries now take 50% or 60%, but the art museum only takes 40%. And out of the rentals, you can rent to buy there. They, a lot of um, businesses will come in there to, to rent art for their offices. And TV shows, I've had a bunch of paintings in TV shows and movies that they come in and they're looking for art. But not too many people really know about it much. Where, where is it as a part? I mean, it's behind the art museum in the Elliott Building. It's um, it used to be in the museum, then it was in the, um, the part that they've just redone for the Rothko stuff. So if you go around the block, just behind it, it's two big rooms in that it's called the Elliott Tower, and it's so it's got windows on the street, which is nice, so that because before it was in the museum and a lot of people who don't go to museums never got in there. So, so it's open to the public to where it's at for yes. anyone to go in? Yeah, okay. it's totally open. And it's run by volunteers who are just the loveliest people you could meet. A lot of them like to, they do art or they, you know, they just care deeply about art. And it's, I just think it's fantastic. Because I've been in other galleries that, um, they're, you know, they're just in it for the money, a lot of them. And that's that's kind of frustrating. So <coughs> thank you. Yeah. But yeah, I would go in there and the guy that runs it right now, Mark, um, has this beautiful English accent. He's just he's so committed to the artists. He cares so much about us and what we do. It's just it's wonderful to see that because you don't get to see that all that much. So how many poppies in total are you getting on there? Four? Four? Yeah. Yeah, right now, but then I don't think four is a good number, so I'll probably uh -huh. throw something maybe down in here, maybe. <coughs> right. Maybe one in the shade, kind of. Oh. Maybe just a bud. Those poppies will be up in about a month. Everywhere. I know, yeah. yeah. I, mean, I, was, I, I just saw a bunch of friends, and they're just so striking. We want to paint oh. them. You want to paint them. Yeah. Like, they just demand it. Yeah, they're, and they're just so happy. And the ones we have here are orange, but they're just as pretty. Okay, so this is sort of a mess. Do you always just kind of when you? I guess you don't paint from photographs that often, but do you always just hold it like that, or do you ever mount it on the wall, or what? Do um, you I have an iPad in my studio that I'll sometimes put like right there. Okay. To work from. It's nice to have a backlit like that. And yeah, the lighting is much better than a photograph. But um. So you just put that? Okay, because I'm just about to get myself an iPad for that purpose. Yeah, no, that's and you all. You just put it on top of your easel. It's got a little flexible, sort of easel thing on it sure. you know, or a holder so sometimes I can get it up on the top or sometimes I've got it here um, okay okay and I usually have music going or I'd, sometimes I'll listen to a book because then it just takes my head away from what I'm doing hmm. and then I don't put so much pressure on myself you know mm -hmm. I'm concentrating on something else um, yeah and just always Go for what is exciting you about the picture or the where you are. I always paint like meaningful places when I travel. 
So it's not real hard for me to pick the view. That's great. I mean, I bring like a little golden mean tool with me so I can kind of uh -huh. place objects. Have you seen, I have a little teeny travel easel. It's yeah. like a box. Mine's like a Peshad, it's about. Yeah, but this one's thick too, it's about six inches high. Oh, you got one of those. So everything's inside of it. Nice. The paint mm -hmm. and the, I mean, everything's like miniaturized kind of. I yeah. just take, and even when I take this one, I try and take tubes of paint that are almost empty. Yeah. They don't weigh as much and they don't take as much space. Yeah, you d it definitely forces you to limit your palette, I think. Right, well. which is really better for you to limit yeah. your palette, but I'm not very good at that. But that blue you're working with right now, that's like what you call the radiant turquoise. Yes, that's, yes, that's very beautiful. Yeah, this you gotta have a, such a pretty color. You definitely need a turquoise or a green yeah. blue, or else your greens will get really muddy. Yep, and I like sap green, even though it has some black in it. A lot of artists don't like sap green, but I like it. I love sap green. Well, it looks just like pine trees. And mm -hmm. It's very ordinary. Yeah, that's why we like it. And I love blue. I, can't, I was taking a workshop <laughs> from Sharon Engel, and it was in Eastern Oregon, and everything was that kind of beige, Ross green, Anna. green, yeah, <laughs> you know, yellowy. It was just, yeah. it was driving me crazy, and. We were painting, there were a whole bunch of us, we were all painting in the woods up in different places, and I got so upset that, I mean, I started crying, but not like little crying, I was like, <laughs> yeah. you know, I was just crying, and and I, I wiped off my painting, and I was just putting blue on it, like this, this beautiful blue, I was just covering the whole thing in blue, and Sharon walks up, and she goes, hi, Nancy, how are you doing? I couldn't even talk, <laughs> and all I could say was, I like <laughs> and then she just left me there. <laughs> and the critique at the end of the day, all these artists they had all their stuff up, and there's my blue thing. She goes, Nancy had a little emotional trouble today. <laughs> so that was my. So now then my kids are always quoting me. I like blue. <laughs> so get that. So it gets you know you get crazy. Do you find that the blue is also um, easy to mix another color with? You know, you talked about adding um, the green and the purple with it to help change it, mm -hmm. um, and the blue is easier to work with to do that. Maybe mutate your colors a little bit. Yeah, more. it is, especially when you put the cabinet light on first. Okay, because it it knocks the blue back. It's not quite as, but if you use a real light touch, you can still get some on there without killing all the color. And some people mix all their colors on the palette. I tend to mix it more on the canvas. I'm, you know, I'm kind of working all over here and making a little bit of a mess, but just sort of give you an idea. Oh, I like that. that would really makes it stand out. Yeah, you know, the poppies really come together. So, because we're way back here, right? Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, the poppies are really p coming together as poppies from here. Yeah, so. <laughs> Poppy, poppies, good. Especially the little one in the middle right. That one that just looks really rigid. That one? It looks yeah. really radiant. It's like terrible that. from up here. <laughs> <laughs> I have that happen to me all the time. It happens to me all the time when I go when I'm in my painting class and I've been sitting up close way too long. Yeah. And then I go walk to the back and I'm like, oh! That's not bad. Yeah. And sometimes it's just total accident. Sometimes I'll look at something I did. How in the world did that happen? Yeah. Happy accident. Yes. <laughs> Very happy. When I'm painting plain air, I don't want to walk away because who knows what's going to happen. So I use my camera to take a picture of it, right. and then I can look at it small. It's not as good, but no, that helps. I'm not. afraid. I'm just afraid of walking away. I mean, what's going to the wind's going to blow it over, or the animals going to come eat it, or who knows? Oh, so the um, animals going to what? I mean, that happened to me last week, so I'm not kidding. But like, <laughs> an animal will come. You know, there's all kinds of reasons when you're out there. I like how you're adding that touch of <coughs> light 
color to bring that stem to life. Oh, and the bugs. Always have a bug in your painting room. You're yes, nice. always a bug. That's texture. That's texture. <laughs> Protein. <laughs> where, where do you get your cards made? Have you made your cards? There's a new place now, um, Powell Minuteman Press. Powell. Oh. And there's a gal named Terrell who works there who is great. She's got a great eye. She can figure out paper. She's helped me, you know, like when I was doing these, I was doing it on some fancy paper. And she said, Nancy, you can do it on this like really inexpensive paper and you'll get the same look. And she so I'm like, great. So she's really helpful. But yeah, Minuteman Press on yeah. Powell. Powell. Yeah, it's a good <coughs> job. This is really a mess with mm -hmm. So I like these little seed pods too. Really dark on one side. Their collages look so pretty. That's really nice. Is, you don't have to put any of this in here. The pods you can kind of invent where you want them to go. Nancy, can I ask you your abstract painting up there? That's the is it a building? Is what are you? This one? Yeah, is this in Portland or where are you? That's a cold wax. I took a cold wax oil and cold wax class, mm -hmm. and it was really interesting. I don't think I'll do very much of it, but you use rollers and all this weird stuff, and you mix it with this wax and vial <coughs> in a jar that you squish together, and then you. And they use credit cards, and they use sticks, and they use all kinds of stuff with it. But it was just kind of fun to have something. So that's not a specific building, or no? Building. That was just a total made-up thing. Oh, but which I usually don't do. I oh, usually like cool. to have some reference, even for my abstract. Because it looks like it's on the river, and it looks like it's kind yeah, of like a gray like, Good, yeah. good. Whatever you oh, want okay. to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> some of them I sign on the edge because I'm like, well, oh. somebody might want to. Mm -hmm. It's a bridge. No, it would, yeah. Or something like that. This way, yeah. then you see the cross so much more. <laughs> it's a reflection in the oh, So, I don't know. Anyway, I think I'm like almost out of time here. Yeah. So, if anybody wants to come and paint, yeah. try some up here, go ahead. Uh, if you have any questions. She said, so I think um, Barb said you were going to talk about marketing your, your paintings. or. Yeah, I mean, I have a website. Um, I'm not a very good marketer. Um, I'm at the Freed Gallery down at the coast, and Lee Freed is wonderful. That's a great gallery. She's very honest. Um, we're, at the, we're at the Leech Freed. Freed, it's close to Salishan. Yeah. Oh. It's been there a long time. And she's, it's, it's a really great place. Um, I'm going to do um, another Open Studios this year if my daughter doesn't have her baby early, because Lake Oswego has joined into Portland Open Studios. So Open Studios is really fun because all these people come in and you have to be working and demonstrating. And like I said, I get make them all paint, they get all excited about it. Mm -hmm. And I sell I sell things at all different levels. I've got greeting cards, I've got these things which are you know $35. And then you know everything in between. So I'm not a very good marketer. Okay. Because I know when's, when's your open studio? Maybe we'll just it's at October 14th and 15th, whatever that weekend is, 14th, 15th, 16th. If my daughter doesn't deliver early in Minnesota. Uh, 
But um, yeah, Open Studios is really fun. One year I had a school, I live on a tiny little dead end, and a school bus came from West, the whole Westland art class came. They got a school bus down our street, and I'm like, how are we gonna get out of here? And all these enthusiastic teenagers piled into my studio, and it was so much fun. But it, it was, I, you know, I said, do this because you love it. Do it, always do it. But you probably are gonna need something else to, to live on. Because yeah. Yeah. there's a reason the term starving artist is around. Because, <laughs> but you don't you do it because you love it. You don't do it to make money because yeah. you can't not do it. You know, it's so involved. So that's my spiel is let the fun show and just enjoy it. So anyway, thank you. Thank you.